Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I have another one of my Pacific friends here with me, and Marvin's uh, just a, has been a terrific influence. Um, and that is how I, I know uh, of December, and I'm so glad that I do. So thank you for having me. I'll start with the two poems that Gianna just mentioned that have been in December. This one is Mrs. Hood Confesses. I tossed her into the woods like a match with its head struck. Lazy girl, la la lying with a basket of day old loaves and my smallest chip lipped pot for the butter. Little go between, I should have named her. Yes, I admit to a hardness in me. I saw only reproach in my mother's big, big eyes. Couldn't look at them without shrinking. So I sent my girl, my daughter, my rosy little pork chop. Tonight, when they all burst in, still slick with wolf, I hardly believed the tale. But when the woodsman swung his ax in demonstration, the girl flickered back with her white, pretty teeth. I flushed, remembering that I was the first to peel flesh into light for her, pushing her into the world, red and wet. Yes, I regret almost everything before this, but not this. Look at her now. She shines like a summer plum, blushing, taut with juice. You can say it should have been me that made the journey, the sun-freckled path, the birch bones bending above her like a rib cage as she went on, reliable as a clock. True, things might have gone badly, but here she is, whole. Now my mother folds inside her rose-budded bedclothes. In the morning, I'll bake her a honey cake. In the morning, if she lets me, I'll wash my daughter at the hearth. I'll brush her black, black hair into sparks. And um, this one, I'm sure, as Jana mentioned, most of you are familiar with the story of Persephone, um, the daughter of Demeter who got trapped in Hades. But this one's called Persephone of Maple Street. They were in the tangle behind the garage with the weeds and the neighbor's dog run stink. But pretty, peeking out like tiny hearts of birds in the grass. So she plucked. A little white thumb stuck up from each stem in the berry's place. In a palm cup, she carried them to where her husband was sweating. Want some of these berries? But he wouldn't take any, got angry because of the heat or the berries or the weeds. Always there was work no one wanted to do. The boy nearby pretended to be poisoned by berries so everyone would laugh, but no one did. She thought the boy was beautiful as a bowl-eyed pony. She should have named him Shadow or Buttercup. A whole summer in her mouth, the berries. She said, you know what this means. But the man did not say a thing. So she answered herself, now I have to stay here. Um, this is another one from my collection, um, my first collection, The Alloy, that's it. <laughs> uh, and uh, I lost my father when I was little, so any chance I had um, before, you know, while, while I was quite small, any chance I had to be close to him, uh, I still hold on to. This is called Handkerchief. My grandmother taught me to iron by practicing on the blank page of my father's handkerchiefs. Each one was flat and white as a ceiling. I perched on the stool beside her, just six, knowing my father would fold square my effort 
All day I would peek from his breast pocket. The iron, so heavy that I used one hand to move the iron, the other to prop my arm. The stool wobbled. Hair stuck to my cheek, one damp curl. Who would teach a girl to push such a heavy, scorching thing? Who can feel wings beat, sing the white song trilling from my throat? Um, this is the one that, uh, that from, from which I get the title of the book. Uh, the poem itself is called uh, the past is alloy, gigantic. There was a motorcycle, cobalt blue, plastic, about 16 inches high, white handlebars. My son rode it, a mad abandoned, clacking in our basement down the sidewalk, no engine but the legs he used to have, attached to the body he used to have, small and milk stuffed. Where are you going? I'd ask, folding laundry. I'm going to see my old mommy. This was the 90s. What did we have then? Chlorofluorocarbons, apple twos. It was hip hop's golden age. He called it mugger cycle. His riding was a sea. This was a long time ago to him and me. The past is alloy, gigantic. Nothing goes away. Everything is somewhere, my old mother used to say. Your windbreaker did not grow legs and walk off by itself. I went back to the park. There it was, pockets stuffed with seed pods I gathered, a finite universe. Bee velvet, the twitching rabbit I'd stalked. That was that day. I already carried the cells that would be my son. Petroleum waited beneath that earth to become the plastic. Before that, as algae, leafless, paleozoic, it drank sun, that simple ardor. It could never not be. Like boy, body, jacket, riding. C. Um, so I also have a couple of poems from my second collection, which isn't out yet. It's due out this year from Blazebox Press. And has anyone in the uh, room ever seen the movie Blade Runner? <laughs> Two, three, okay, so four, okay, great. Um, five, yay, five people are going to know what I'm reading about. <laughs> um, because my new uh, book is um, is just a chapter chapter ekphrastic response to the film Blade Runner, which is my favorite movie. So I wrote a whole book of poetry about it, which is to say if uh, what I learned in the two years that I was working on that book, if you love something, if you love a work of art or a particular artist or um, a genre or a medium that you love, just take that deep dive um, because I I just had such a great time working on the book, um, learning about the movie, and spending time with something, with a piece of art that I loved. So um, in the movie, a guy named Deckard is asked to, because it is his job, kill a bunch of androids, which are called replicants. That is his job. During the course of the movie, he begins to have second thoughts about what kind of job that is and what it really means uh, to be a person as um, he meets these replicants and discovers that they have developed emotions and feelings of their own. So this poem is, uh, addresses chapter 27 of the movie, when Decker has to go uh, try to talk to a guy named J.F. Sebastian. And to do that, he's going to try to trick his way into the apartment by giving a false name. The name of the poem is the name of the chapter in the movie, No Way to Treat a Friend. In boyhood, my brother, blonde, bodied for any game, 
Memories of green field run and pitch, frozen rink, flying after black puck. My brother could make friends, had that high school fame. I tried to learn to give him his shot, never got the knack. He didn't like to be touched. I'd knot his ties for him on my own neck. Once he barked, thanks for work. But what is the body, confine, cage, his trap of rapid decrepitude, his dangerous days and shitless luck? And when our mother, our only the good things, mother, left this world, my brother, skin sick, body betrayed, said fuck that and went right after. So when deck, under cop smack and smoke, parked in a car, semi-stripped with him in it, beaten, cheek bit in the crook shadow rain, postures himself, an old friend. It seems right, remembering, recollecting, the missing body story, parts, even Frank, that shock, all that was left unmade that Deckard as dead man's pal, from the Sanskrit prata, the Romani pra, would take, give, before and after the kill, my brother's name. And in the following chapter, Deckard gets into the apartment, meets there a replicant named Pris who was built as what they call a pleasure model. And uh, I don't know, for me, just politics recently makes me think of, of that idea of a person being purpose-built. So I wanted to read this one. Uh, it starts with a quote from the director, Ridley Scott. Uh, when Deckard gets into the apartment, she the, the, the the robot replicant has disguised herself as a doll, a giant doll. And Ridley Scott says, we just made this up on the spot. Daryl, Hannah, the actress, was this very beautiful girl, very athletic, strong, who could play this naive waif, child, woman, and also be very dangerous. She's like a doll going crazy. So this is the poem called Death Among the Menagerie. A woman can make herself up. She is part of the collection. She is standard for military installations. When a man enters a room, it may be barrel first. She is veiled, dog. Her eyes have rolled. She is still as a machine. He is not sure of what he recognizes. What if she is not a woman at all? Then her body will be fright wig, finger crack, a terror that happens to him. Gun becomes runway, gangway, gaze, body as fall, flail, what flies from, flees, her head thrown back, rapture, rupture, repose, the flail, the blood burst body, flayed, can be bumble, can be be, be, be. Won't my money? His horror face is a flower blown open and open, amped shutter speed gift glitch, and he cannot muscle its fragrance back in. Thanks very much.